One of the questions I often get asked with historical hand sewing is how do I finish my seams? In modern times, there are inventive solutions like sergers, but it isn't exactly possible to serge your seams by hand. I guess the closest thing you'll be getting is a blanket stitch, and well, that can be fairly time-consuming as well. I'm not going to pretend that these options are fast solutions. I mean, come on, we're talking about hand sewing after all. Compared to machinery, hand sewing is not a fast solution. But perhaps fast isn't always better, and perhaps enjoying each stitch is part of the fun. There are, however, some pretty clever methods of finishing seams that have been used all throughout history. I've thought about this topic a lot, and I've experimented with many of the choices. These are five of my favorite ways to hand finish seams, for historical sewing specifically, but also beyond if you really just love hand sewing or if you want a beautiful couture finish. The first option is very often utilized in Victorian construction. You can see here these are the seams of an antique Victorian bodice in my collection. I define this method as whip stitching the raw edges, and the reason you can see the edges inside the garment is because of a Victorian construction technique called flatlining. The way Victorian bodices were often made is by placing the outer fabric and the lining together, basting it, and then treating them as one. What this in turn does is you end up with the raw edges of all the seams inside of the bodice. It creates a pretty cool effect actually, and it makes it often easier later on to perform alterations. Finishing the seams of your garment does often prolong the life of it, and so if you opt for historical Victorian construction, whip stitching the edges of your exposed seams, like so, helps to keep them from fraying. Another option if you want something a little bit more secure, which you tend to see more in the high-end or the expensive Victorian garments of the time, is to ribbon bind the edges. You can just fold a ribbon over any raw edges and secure it in place with running stitches, whip stitches, back stitches, or whatever you deem best. I used this ribbon binding technique for the 1890 walking suit I made back in my first year sewing, and it helps to keep the raw edges extremely tidy. Before I go any further, I want to give a big thanks to my patrons for supporting this channel. They're one of the reasons why I'm able to keep making these videos for you all whilst also working another full-time job. If you would like to support this channel financially and help fund future projects and videos, a link to join my Patreon is in the description box below. Whether or not you're a patron, thanks so much for your support regardless. The next seam finishing method is one that I absolutely adore. I call it the Georgian method, but this isn't actually its name, I don't think. The reason I call it this is apparently because it was used a lot in the 18th century. I tend to opt for this method very often. With this technique, you aren't technically finishing the seams, you're more so flipping them over and hiding them. This technique works only with lined garments, so if your garment is unlined, there are two techniques at the end of this video that I'll show you for that. But with this Georgian way, you lay the outer fabric and the lining fabric together, wrong sides to wrong sides. Then you flip under the seam allowances of both outer fabric and lining fabric so that they meet each other inside the garment, like this. If you stagger the fold of the lining slightly and just make the seam allowances smaller on the lining than the outer fabric, the lining won't show onto the outside of the garment. And then I make little whip stitches all around the fold where the edges meet, and that secures the lining onto the outer fabric of the garment. Then there's no need for things like bag lining or understitching, which can be actually very faffy. I use this method all of the time because it's great and it creates an incredibly clean finish. The third technique is a beautiful and simple stitch called the English stitch, which was used often in the 18th century. It's a way to seam and also line your garment in one, and because the garments end up lined, the raw edges are of course hidden inside the garment, which means they don't fray. I have an entire video dedicated to teaching the English stitch, so I'm going to place the link in the description box and also here in a card, as I think that video will do a far more thorough job of explaining everything. I'm working on an exciting project at the moment actually, and most of my seams are using the English stitch, so it can often come in handy, especially for long straight seams of a garment that you want lined. The fourth option is a way to finish an unlined garment. So say you're making historical underwear or a blouse or shirtwaist that you don't want to line. This is an ideal finishing stitch for those options. It's called the flat felt seam. What you'll first do is seam up your pieces using whatever stitch you prefer. I usually go in with a back stitch because it's super strong. Then on the side of the seam that you don't want to see, trim down about half of the seam allowance of that edge so you get these staggered edges, where one seam allowance is wider than the other. Then take the wider seam allowance and flip it in half, encapsulating the more narrow seam allowance. Now you can baste or pin these in place, and finally I go in with a fouling stitch, which is almost like a whip stitch, except I'm just pulling one or two threads of my fabric before moving my needle into the tube we've created, as this will make it so that you can hardly see the stitches from the right side of the garment. The fifth method that I'm going to share for finishing seams is one I've seen on many Victorian extants. It works well for either flatlined garments or unlined garments. 
I'm not really sure what to call this technique, but basically you either iron flat a seam or fold under a seam allowance to the wrong side if it's an edge of a garment, and then you take some ribbon or twill tape and use felling stitches or whip stitches to secure the ribbon down. This works great on Victorian garments like a bodice at places like a neckline or the center front opening. I use this method on so many of my garments because it just works really well, especially at places where it might be more challenging to flat fell a seam. This is just five of many ways that you can finish your seams with historical sewing and beyond. Dressmakers of the past have come up with some incredibly clever ways of doing so, and I think even for modern garments these could work really well and create a wonderfully clean hand finish. If you'd like to learn even more historical hand sewing techniques, be sure to watch this video on 7 must know historical hand sewing stitches next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in two weeks for another video.